Yeah, it was kind of sketchy. I was not comfortable taking that turn with all those people. Ah, you got a puncture. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to today's video. Today, we are heading over to Litchfield because we're going to be doing the tour of Litchfield Hills. This is not a race. It's going to be a training ride for our upcoming event, which will be in a month, um, which is Mount Greylock. So this is a 75 mile course and Hopefully the weather will cooperate with us today. It's showing that there is a chance of thunderstorms later or possible rain, but let's cross our fingers that it is actually going to just be cloudy. I'd rather be riding when it's cloudy out as opposed to raining or as opposed to just sun beating down on us. I know we had a heat advisory the past few days but it looks like we had thunderstorms last night and um, it hopefully broke the heat. Yes yeah, so we're on our way over to Torrington to start this tour of Litchfield Hills. Joy might have mentioned that it's not a race it's a non-competitive event so um, we are treating it as a training ride and so we're going to do a few efforts on some of the longer climbs there, but it won't, shouldn't be anything too crazy. Uh, but it's still going to be a long day. Uh, I think our goal is to, to finish the 75 miles in less than five hours, which should be doable. Uh, so yeah, it's still a long day in the saddle, and you know if you. A few zone three and four efforts on the climb, so there will be a nice training stimulus from this. I think it should be fun. It's you know pretty close to home, but we've, but we've never done it before. The tour of Litchfield Hills is a non-competitive bike ride that runs through the scenic Litchfield Hills of Connecticut. They offer 12, 30, 55, 75, and 100 mile routes. The mission of the tour is to bring together community resources with a goal of raising funds to support the care, treatment, education, and prevention of cancer for residents living, working, or receiving treatment for cancer in Northwest Connecticut. Today, we're riding the 75 mile course with over 5,000 feet of climbing. We decided to do this event not only to support the care for cancer patients, but to prep for the Mount Greylock Hill Climb time trial in September. Just doing warm-up laps around this parking lot. I have a two 950 milliliter water bottles in my frame and it's kind of hitting one of the ones that are on my seat tube is hitting my my leg so I might swap it back out to the uh, 750 that seems a little more comfortable because I feel like this is gonna bother me all day it's gonna affect the way I ride because I'm trying to avoid I'm trying to avoid um, you know hitting my leg up against it so I might just swap it out to a 750. It's pretty humid out here also. So I'm definitely gonna need an extra bottle to just 
pour on myself if I need it. I need to. It's humid, but it's cooler. But I can definitely feel the humidity. It's not as thick as it was the past few days, but then again, it is. A, it's almost eight o'clock in the morning, so usually in the morning it's cooler. Whenever I pedal, my inner thigh keeps hitting the bottle. Oh. <coughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I see. Like, like when I pedal, like, watch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's not good. The 75 mile course is hilly and right off the bat at the beginning is a 4 mile climb. Our coach laid out a plan for us to tackle some of these climbs, which includes riding at tempo at the first 4 miles, hold a sustained threshold power at 341 climb, and back to tempo on the last 8 mile climb. The four-mile climb heading out of Torrington toward Litchfield woke our legs up quickly. We rode it at tempo power, which did feel weird being right at the beginning of the ride, but the climb was smooth and gradual, which allowed us to spin at our preferred cadence and keep our power output steady. I wish that we had a climb like this near our house to do workouts on.
I rode the first four miles at the top end of my tempo range, averaging 162 watts at a speed of 12.2 miles per hour. This was the first time we've done this event, so most of the roads were unfamiliar to us. We knew from the elevation profile that this was going to be a hilly course, but the first 30 miles was pretty much up and down. But what a way to conserve energy than to draft behind a couple of guys who towed us to the second climb. When we approached the five mile climb where we were supposed to hold threshold, I made a mistake by starting my effort too soon because there was a confusion on when the actual five mile climb started. So once I made the turn into the climb, that's when I began to settle in on the effort. Unfortunately though, the actual climb started right after the first aid station, so that meant I had to hold threshold for another five miles. We're going straight, okay? I'm not stopping at the aid station. That was the aid station. Keep going. Well, oh yeah, I did too, because it looked like it was going up. Straight, all right turn, right turn. Right, is that right? I completed the climb in 20 minutes and 3 seconds with an average power of 173 watts and a speed of 14.8 miles per hour. It was lower than what I targeted for the day, but given the conditions and the faux pas at the beginning, I guess I didn't perform that poorly. Similar to Joy, I started my effort too early on the five mile climb up Route 341 in Warren. We were about 23 miles into the ride and I saw the elevation profile on my Wahoo going up for what looked like several miles, and I started riding at threshold. About five minutes later, I realized that it wasn't the climb I was looking for, as it started going downhill after about a mile and a half. I stopped my effort and then three minutes later I saw the first aid station, which was supposed to be the starting point for the five mile climb, but I had forgotten that when I jumped the gun. After passing the first aid station, I started to recognize the road we were on because up ahead was the intersection with Route 45, which we've ridden through in the past to get to Lake Warmug. I knew that this was roughly where the climb was supposed to start, so I restarted my threshold effort. It took me about 16 minutes at 253 watts to reach the top, which felt like a solid effort given that I already had some miles in the legs and had just done over 5 minutes at similar power when I had my false start. At 
at the top of the 341 climb, I began feeling hot. It was a humid day, but I hadn't really noticed it until that effort. So yeah, just be careful with this descent. It's a little bumpy. Oh, cool me off. We descended down into the town of Cornwall, but sadly was met with more climbing. Then we arrived at the second aid station where we refueled and grabbed a snack. I was impressed by the quality of offerings at this aid station because it was stocked with scratch products, plenty of water, and even ice. Uh, it was just too tight for me and there was like a guy to my left and I couldn't like really take the line I wanted to so I like kind of just came to a stop like I mean like I well I actually I kind of swerved around this guy and then went into the grass and the like there was like a median thing there. Yeah, it was kind of sketchy. I was not comfortable taking that turn with all those people. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I know sometimes I'm like, I get off the saddle to ride out of the saddle just to stretch my back. And then all of a sudden it's just, when I sit back down, it's like, yeah. like, ooh. So, Aid station was well stocked on that one. Nice. They had some scratch stuff, water, plenty of water and ice. So it's so humid too. So at mile 56 is the next aid station. And it's also the start of that <clears throat> last climb. You know, that it's eight miles, it's like rolling. Yeah, I think I'm okay. I should have put mosquito repellent on myself. before this ride. I was getting uh, bit by mosquitoes there at that aid station. As we rode off from the aid station, we were pleased the terrain was a bit kinder to us. No super steep climbs to contend with, but my legs and entire body were beginning to tire. I felt like whatever I ate or drank sat in my stomach, unable to fully digest. It was fairly humid that day, so I'm wondering okay. if it was because my body was so, more concerned about cooling itself off than digesting food. We're at 2.44 elapsed time. Thirty-nine miles. So like thirty-five more miles left, halfway there. Aww. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
water on myself. The sun's coming out. I took one of my bottles with plain water and scored it down my front and back. But I had to do this sparingly as the mosquitoes were out for a feast, as I could feel them biting me on my back and legs. Eventually, the sun broke through the clouds in North Canaan. But instead of the mosquitoes bothering me, this time it was the heat. This short exposed section was poorly maintained with cracks, potholes, and chip seal that jostled us around the bike. We rode past the third aid station to begin the last climb of the day, an eight mile section that was mainly rolling terrain. In this section, the goal was to hold tempo. I managed my effort on the first few miles, but we had to slow down as Jason got a rear puncture. Ah, oh, you got a puncture. Okay, just keep riding, just keep riding. I'm getting sprayed. Oh, sh**. Why isn't it sealing? Maybe it is sealing. Rear. Do you still have air in it? Oh yeah. Hold on. I thought it sealed. Come on! Does it feel like bouncy? No, I'm, I, I, it doesn't look flat. It's still climbing, so you can still go. Yeah. We'll just be careful in any of the bumps. After much anticipation, the tire finally sealed on its own, and luckily the tire hardly lost air. We decided to continue on with the effort, or whatever effort I can muster up, with 53 miles in my legs. I felt like I hadn't lost much air, so we started riding at tempo again, and I was able to continue that for the rest of the climb with no issues. My effort was broken up into two blocks of 10 minutes and 20 minutes with three minutes in between. coach told us that tempo would probably feel like low threshold at this point in the ride, and she was right. I rode it around 200 to 210 watts contently, feeling like I could go harder but didn't really want to. On that eight mile section, I was only able to average 137 watts with average speed of 13.7 miles per hour. My body was in all sorts of discomfort at this point, but I knew that it will be downhill after that.
last 12 miles heading back into Torrington were mostly downhill with a few flat sections, so we were able to average around 20 miles per hour during that time. My legs were fatigued and zone 2 was starting to feel like tempo, but mentally I was encouraged because we were going fast and I knew we'd be done in less than an hour. At mile 73, the clouds decided it was time to rain on us. Luckily, it only lasted five miles before the sun peeked through again. It was hard to see at this point, so I was glad to have two guys ahead of me to follow back to the finish line. Brief rainfall at mile 73 didn't bother me much. We made it through much worse conditions for over five hours at the Vermont Grand Fondo, so this little bit of rain was nothing in comparison. Right before the rain fell, a couple guys passed us and once again Joy jumped on their wheel. These guys were going a little faster than my legs felt like going at that point, but I followed Joy's wheel as best I could. As we entered Torrington, there was some bumpy pavement, and when, whenever I coasted over it, I would start to get dropped and had to keep accelerating to get back on Joy's wheel. But it was kind of fun to do these mini surges at the end. At the finish line, we were greeted by some children who were handing out water bottles, which was a fitting ending because this event was very well supported. We had a great experience and a tough training session. Thank you. Thank you so much. Overall, it was another successful training ride despite the conditions, but nothing ever goes perfect. It's just how you mentally handle the situation. We would like to thank the event organizer and volunteers for making this event happen. This is such a great cause in the Northwest Corridor of Connecticut, so if you're nearby, we highly encourage you to participate. This is a well-organized event with proper signage and well-stocked aid stations. If you would like to donate to this great cause in fighting cancer, please see the link below in the description. As always, don't forget to enjoy your rides.